Whether you're fanatical about Sons of Anarchy or an avid watcher of the OC, you've definitely watched the actor Johnny Lewis in one of his many elements. The absolutely baffling story of his death has disturbed me pretty much since 2012 when it transpired. On September 26, 2012, authorities were called to a beautiful and well-known villa in the Hollywood Hills. There they were greeted with an ominous sight. The mangled body of a small framed and disheveled young man lay dead in the driveway. The neighbors next door began emerging from their home with an expression still ripe with panic and bewilderment. They made the call to emergency. Johnny had been very much alive just minutes before, his arms stuck in their front door, desperately trying to gain access to continue his assault. He hopped the fence in an unprovoked rage where he began beating a man painting a house. The neighbors came to the man's rescue, eventually peeling Johnny from the blindsided man and bolting into their house. Johnny shoved his arm in their door, acting like a rabid animal. The neighbor slammed the heavy door onto his limb over and over, but it took several hits before he finally retreated. They watched in horror through their window as a skinny, sweaty young man ran off over their fence somehow, barely touching his feet to the ground as if he had some superhuman ability. Little did they know that Johnny had already unleashed his violent rage on two other victims just feet away. Upon investigating the interior of the beautiful and eclectic villa, a scarring crime scene was discovered. Blood spatter and brain matter littered the walls and high-rise ceiling. A bloody mess was discovered in the bathtub. An elderly woman later identified as the beloved 81-year-old Catherine Davis was found dead, clearly a victim of overkill. Her head was severely beaten in, revealing her wounded brain. She had several puncture holes in her cheek inflicted by a pencil that lay beside her. Well-defined contusions and marks on her neck revealed strangulation. The end of the assault, likely inflicted post-mortem, was a stomp to her head. This was the woman who took Johnny into her highly demanded artist villa, not only his live-in landlady, but a dear and trusted friend of Johnny's for several years. Feet away in the bathroom bathtub, Catherine's adored cat was found slain. A story began unfolding in authorities' minds. The violent, unprovoked attack on his neighbors, his recent criminal history, and the obvious wounds on his body, clearly inflicted during a struggle, told them that Johnny was likely responsible for this carnage. They sought a motive, but never found one. According to those closest to Johnny, he was a lifelong pacifist who would rather sip tea and play chess than hit the clubs or experiment with pills. Part of his charm was his philosopher's nature and sobriety. There was one event in Johnny's life that could potentially shed a little light. One night in October 2011, Johnny Lewis lost control of his motorcycle while rounding a curve at 60 miles per hour. He was able to basically walk away with little obvious catastrophic injury. He underwent a very brief and basic examination. Two months later, he was arrested for the first time. He refused to undergo an MRI to seek brain injury. Seemingly overnight, Johnny became a different person. Plagued with extreme paranoia, he committed some serious crimes, including assault and breaking and entering. The lifelong pacifist was suddenly capable of unsettling violent outbursts. While incarcerated, a drug panel came back clean. People who knew Johnny while doing time said that he never exhibited drug-seeking behavior. There were many ways to secure illicit substances, and Johnny couldn't have cared less about finding any. Still, the natural conclusion in a situation like this is drugs, bath salts, unpredictable designer drugs that can cause bizarre behavior. But at the end of the day, there was never any evidence of that. His lawyer argued that he needed treatment for marijuana addiction to get him a cushy sentence, but Johnny himself sent an email to a friend laughing about the ridiculousness around his defense. His autopsy came back negative for drugs. There's always a chance that a new designer drug simply could not be screened at the time, but drugs really seem to be an unlikely explanation. Brain trauma can explain the change noticed in Johnny in the months prior to his death. Damage to the frontal lobe can cause issues with impulse control and personality changes. Brain injury can impede a person's ability to hold rational thought. It can even appear as if somebody is suffering from schizophrenia. But Johnny was also raised in the Church of Scientology where help for mental illness is forbidden. The idea that mental illness is a farce lie is repeatedly pushed on the cult followers. Schizophrenia tends to pop up in the late 20s and early 30s. 
It's entirely possible that the bike wreck was a coincidence and Johnny was just getting sick. Whatever the explanation, this man was not born a monster. Something shifted in him that caused him to suffer horribly and made him capable of committing these atrocities. It's difficult to sympathize with the killer, but I do in this case. My heart aches for the beautiful woman who lost her life, and it aches for the person that Johnny clearly once was. The events that unfolded on September 26, 2012 led Johnny to the roof or balcony. According to his autopsy, evidence points to an accidental fall, not a suicide. Of course, without direct witnesses to his actual death, we'll never know for sure. It took Johnny approximately 2.1 seconds to hit the concrete driveway. Reports claim that he died on impact, but they're wrong. His severely fractured skull caused several large hemorrhages in his brain. Blood was found in his spinal fluid, brain, chest cavity, lungs, as well as numerous external wounds caused from the fall. Johnny lived for one to three seconds after meeting deceleration or sudden stop to moving. In all likelihood, he was knocked out immediately. The third vertebrae in his neck was also broken, another potentially fatal wound. An absolutely harrowing ending to a complex tale, Johnny was a warm-hearted, brilliant-minded, and intuitive man. Johnny was also a murderer. He didn't suffer in his death the way that he suffered towards the end of his life. This is proof that there's often a gray area when it comes to murder. It's easier to believe all killers are evil than it is to accept the truth, which is sometimes killers are victims too. Victims of circumstance, victims of injury, victims of mental illness in a failed system. All that's left for us to do now is to vow to be better.